In this lecture, I'm going to discuss the simplest type of data structure, array. So, what is an array? Why do you need it? And most importantly, how to properly implement it in your code? To answer these questions, let me open my Visual Studio to give you a simple illustration. Suppose we want a very simple program that asks the user to input three numbers and then display the three numbers in a console window. Without the concept of array, you might write a code that looks something like this. You declare three variables, a, b, and c, then call the console window to read the user's input one by one. Let me display first enter number one, and then I'll use variable a to store the value that the user has typed from the keyboard. Just make sure convert it to int32 first before storing it. And then I'll copy this line of code twice and make sure to change the corresponding numbers and variables b and c. Now, to display the content of each variable in the console window, again, I'll call the console.writeLine method and say you typed and then a horizontal tab and followed by values a and then tab again and then B, and then C, separated by tab. Now, let's run the code. If I type 4, 10, and 5, then I'll get a result you type 4, 10, 5. Now, suppose we want to change the program requirement that instead of 3 inputs, we want 5. With the current structure of our code, we can accomplish it by declaring two additional variables, D and E. And then I'm going to copy-paste this line of code twice, I'll change this to 4 and this to 5, and then I'm going to use these variables D and E to store the input values as well. Finally, I'll update this line of code to display the values of D and E. Let us check the output. And if I type 4, 10, 5, 14, and 20, I'll get the result you type 4, 10, 5, 14, and 20, which is great. But what if I tell you that I now want 1 million numbers instead of 5? Perhaps you'll stop watching this video right now and say, are you kidding me? If we apply the same approach that we did earlier, we can still accomplish this task, but it would be very inefficient in terms of coding. You don't want to be modifying your code that much every time a simple requirement changes. And honestly, you don't want to declare 1 million different variables just for this very simple task. So with this, let me introduce you to the concept of array data structure. Array is simply a container, similar with your ordinary variable. But instead of holding only one data item, it can hold multiple data items called elements. Array is a type of data structure that is linear, meaning data stored in an array can be accessed sequentially. Data items in an array are stored in contiguous memory locations, meaning data is located next to each other in memory. And in coding, we refer to these locations when we access our data items as index. And lastly, array data structure is homogeneous meaning it can only hold data items of the same type. So when we use array in our code, we do something like this. You give the data type, followed by open and close square brackets, and then your variable name. And then the new operator tells your computer to allot space in your memory with five compartments that can hold an integer data type for each location. When we declare an array like this, c -sharp gives a default value stored in each location or cell depending on the data type you use. In the case of a number, it will be zero. If it is Boolean, it is false. For a string, it will be an empty string. Array in c -sharp and for most programming languages has fixed length. When we define the size, the memory location is permanent, and we cannot just shrink or grow an array during program execution. And these are the things that we are going to discuss in some other videos. We can also declare an array and initialize its content like this. In this way, we implicitly say that the size of our array is 5, since it already has 5 elements placed upon declaration. So, how do you access the elements inside your array? Well, all you have to do is type the array name, followed by open and close square brackets, and inside it, you specify the index number associated to the element you want to access. In this example, 5 will be printed to the console window. Similar to your ordinary variable, you can store new data element to a specific location in your array like this. In effect, 20 will be replaced by 99. One thing to remember, be very careful when accessing your array elements via index. 
array in C-sharp is zero-based indexing, meaning the first element is at index zero, and the last element will always be the size of your array minus one. If you try to access an element using an index that doesn't exist, you will receive an array out of bounds exception or error. So let's go back to our previous code and use this concept to accomplish the required task. Now, instead of declaring five individual variables, I'm going to declare just one array of integer. I'll call it numbers and set its size to five. I'll replace these individual variables by accessing each individual array location to store each input. And then, to display all elements of this array, I'll do the same thing. Replace variables a, b, c, d, and e with numbers index 0, numbers index 1, numbers index 2, index 3, and numbers index 4, respectively. And then let's check the output. And it works exactly the same as before. Now, you might ask, how is it better than the previous one? Well, the answer is not actually. But since we use an array instead of an individual variable, I can now harness the power of loops to access each individual element without having to type repeatedly similar lines of code several times. And here it goes. I'll use a for loop statement, initialize i to 0, and put a condition where i should be less than the array size, in this case 5. I'll cut this line of code and insert it inside a for loop. What we want with this loop is to access the array's element at index 0 to 4, and this index will be represented by the variable i as it changes its value every iteration. Next is, I need to replace this fixed number 1 since I don't want to display this value 5 times. But instead, I'll use the value of i plus 1, so it changes the value being displayed every loop. Let us run and test the program. And I'll type the same set of values, and as you see, our output is exactly the same as before, but now it is a bit more efficient in terms of coding. Then, I'll modify this code that displays all the content of this array by applying the same concept. I'll implement it using for loop as well, initialize i to 0, with condition i less than 5. I'll cut this portion of code and place it prior to the loop, since I don't want this text u type to be displayed several times. Change it to write from right line so that each value of the array is displayed on the same line and not on the next line. I only need this code and display each element separated by tab. And I can already get rid of these extra codes. Now, one last thing, I need to change this fixed index of 0 to my variable i so that it changes its value every iteration. I'll clean up my code and now let's test our program. And there you go, the result is the same. Going back to our code, you'll notice that the size of our array is usually the same number we use in our condition to limit the for loop. And if we change our array size, say we want it to be smaller like 3, without updating the condition inside the loop, we will have a problem during runtime when we access the fourth and the fifth element of our array. This location is no longer accessible since you are trying to access a dimension beyond the size that you define. And for that, you will encounter an index out of range exception and your program will break. To resolve this issue, instead of placing an actual number to set the limit, it is advisable to use the length property of your array so that whatever size you define for your array, the length property will always give you the same number without having to change it manually. Now let's run and test our program. And it loops three times. Now let's check a different value, say 5, and it works great. If you want to test, you can change this to 1 million and see what happens. I'll enter some random numbers, but I'm not going to finish this one. So there you go. And now, it's your time to code.